Okay, um, I am Michael Melly, and I'm presenting our paper, How Bad Can It Get? Characterizing Secret Leakage in Public GitHub Repositories. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Matt McNeese and Dr. Bradley Reeves, all of us from NC State University, and Matt's also from Cisco. Um, where's the clicker? There it is, yeah, sorry. Um, so back in January 2013, GitHub, who's the single largest host of online software repositories, unveiled a major overhaul to their search functionality. This new feature had a brand new infrastructure that would allow users to scan all commits from public repositories in near real time. As you might imagine, this feature could have a wide range of immensely practical uses for the open source community. But no good deed goes unpunished. And quickly, in the first 24 hours, users began to realize they could use this for nefarious reasons, looking for things that developers wouldn't want them to find. Specifically, some users crafted targeted search queries, like begin RSA private key, in order to find authentication secrets and account credentials. In fact, the day after GitHub released it, they shut it down. While they said that this was due to an unrelated technical issue, many speculated that the two incidents were related. Regardless, they brought it back online shortly thereafter, but no apparent changes had been made. Now, this was back in 2013, so surely, in the six years since, developers have learned their lesson and are now using proper security practices, right? No. So, um, in the years that have followed, there have been countless instances of developers being surprised when their secrets that they publicly posted on GitHub are compromised. Um, this is an ongoing problem. It's continuing today, and it's what we focus on in our work. So we performed the first large-scale, long-term, um, longitudinal measurement study of secret leakage on GitHub. We are going to demonstrate to you two novel approaches that allow you to reliably detect secrets at scale on GitHub and even in near real time. And finally, we're going to show that secret leakage is pervasive and constant and can affect developers of all capabilities. In order to do this, we needed to have a way to reliably search GitHub at scale. Of course, there exists the search feature, and pretty much all existing work uses something like this, where they'll search a trigger phrase and then just report on the blanket amount of results that appear. Unfortunately, I'm gonna show you that this simply doesn't work. It's not sufficient. And this is exemplified by an Ars Technica article that uses this exact methodology. If you look closely at this screenshot, which is lifted directly from their results, you might be able to note that none of the RSA private key search hits actually return a valid RSA private key. So this, res this methodology, while it's really scalable, they're scanning millions of repositories, it provides a lot of false positives. So any conclusions you draw from this are also gonna be inaccurate. So what we wanna do is we don't only wanna achieve the scalability where we're scanning all the files on GitHub, but we also need to make sure we have accurate results. The only academic work in the space was able to improve accuracy above the Ars Technica methodology by using regular expression scans on a really small scale, only 84 repositories and looking for a single API key. So while this was accurate, it was not scalable in any way. So we're left with this challenge of trying to achieve both scalability, scanning billions of files, and accuracy, having high confidence in the results that we pull from them. No prior work has been able to achieve both, but we do. We do it using this multi-step methodology shown here. For more in-depth, you can read our paper, but briefly, I would like to give some insight into the key challenges we faced and how we solved them. Our first key challenge is one related to reliability. It's how do we identify when we have a given string of text, whether it represents a valid secret or not, as opposed to an example key or just any old random string. We do this by expanding on the idea of regular expression scanning, and then we develop a new conservative validity filtering algorithm. Our second key challenge is one of finding secrets at scale. Now fortunately, thanks to our solution to the first key challenge, we've ensured accuracy. So we can actually come up with two or novel approaches to using the GitHub search API and a GitHub BigQuery snapshot in order to do this at scale. We're gonna focus in now on the first key challenge of how can we identify a secret. I'm gonna quickly work through this exercise where we try to identify which one of these is the valid secret using our own intuition, and hopefully this enlightens our algorithm. At first glance, it should be obvious that the first string is an example key. It's not a valid secret. The second string is very repetitive, so it might also be an example key, but more generally, we might just say it doesn't appear random enough for what we might expect a secret to be. The third string, it looks pretty random, but we can note that it's actually just a GUID. 
and GUIDs are used all over software for non-sensitive cases, so we can't consider that to be a secret reliably either. Now here's the real challenge in the last three strings. To me, at least, they all appear random, and they all look like they might potentially be secrets. So even doing manual review, this is difficult, let alone for an algorithm. So I'm gonna have to cheat and say that I have prior knowledge, and I know that is this one. How do I know this? First, a quick disclaimer. Of course, any one of these could be a secret by nature of randomness, but in our paper, we take a conservative approach. We only wanna consider secrets that we have really high confidence in. And the one that I selected, we have high confidence in for two reasons. The first is that it appears random. This is the essence of our validity filtering algorithm. And the second is that I have a prior knowledge that all Google API keys follow a very unique signature that this string adheres to. And the probability that a random string in this character set matches a signature is minuscule. So if you start seeing this on any sort of scale, you can have some high confidence in your results. So where did I get that prior knowledge from? We surveyed hundreds of public APIs looking for um, it providers that give you an authentication secret that follows such a distinct structure. We call these distinct secrets. We came up with a total of about 15. Many of them are in the Alexa top 50, including Google and Twitter and Facebook. We took these distinct secrets and we wrote tight and accurate regular expressions for them that could be used to scan a file. The results from these regular expressions are then fed through our validity filtering algorithm. We did the same thing for PEM format asymmetric private keys for pretty much the same reasoning. They're also very distinct. Now we come to our second key challenge, of how can we do this at scale? I've shown that we wanna perform a regular expression scan and our validity filtering algorithm on the billions of files on GitHub, and it's simply infeasible for us to do that directly. Fortunately, we have ways to make GitHub do a lot of the work for us. We can leverage tools that they provide to give us a reduced set of files that we can then download offline and process using our own computational power. We use two different tools to do this. The first is the GitHub Search API, which is very similar to the search box on the website. Um, this can give you the 1,000 most recent commits on GitHub. So if you scan this at a continuous rate, you get a continuous view of every commit in near real time that's going on to GitHub. In our paper, we achieve, show that despite rate limiting, we can achieve a 99% coverage of all public commits despite or with a single key. This also means that all the repos we're looking at are actively developed, and so the secrets are most likely to be sensitive. On the other end of the spectrum is the BigQuery snapshot. This is a weekly snapshot of every public licensed repo on GitHub, about 13% of all the repos. This gives you a more historical view of GitHub, and so the repos are gonna be more mature. Together, these provide a very diverse view of GitHub at scale. So what did we find? We scanned the search API for six months continuously. Remember, that's 99% coverage of all commits for six months. We took a BigQuery snapshot of all the public licensed repos as of April 2018. Leveraging these tools, we had Google, or GitHub filter down billions of files for us to about four and a half million that we downloaded for offline analysis. We extracted over 200,000 unique secrets from these files, including a median of nearly 1,800 new secrets a day. So what were the most common secrets, you're probably wondering. Over half of them were Google secrets. Not really a surprise, Google is really popular. They have a lot of different APIs. There are also a large number of asymmetric private keys. RSA is the most common. Um, again, not a surprise, these are used in a wide range of applications. More generally, some of our secrets can lead to various risk factors. Every single API key that we are scanning for can lead to data integrity violations, where a user's data is manipulated without their consent. Most of them can also lead to privacy violations, where a user's sensitive data is accessed without their consent. Also, a lot of them can lead to message abuse, like spam or social media bots. And finally, some of them can even cause direct monetary loss to a user. Um, a key challenge we face in this work is that we have no ground truth. So it's a question of how many of the unique secrets that we've actually found are sensitive. To do this, we took a, to evaluate this, we took a subset of our files and we manually rated each secret as being sensitive or not. A non-sensitive secret might be an example key that passed through our algorithms or something used in a unit test that's actually a valid structure. By doing this, we were able to estimate about 89% of our secrets overall were truly sensitive, including nearly 94% for API secrets. This confirmed that most of the discovered secrets we found were sensitive and affirmed our methodology. We're curious whether users catch on to their mistake. 
after they commit a secret. So we monitored after detection how long the secret remained on GitHub. We've, the graph on the left shows the first 24 hours after commit. And if you look at the bottom line, you'll see a quick drop of about 10% in the number of secrets on GitHub. This shows that some people do catch on, albeit a small number. But the right graph, which shows the first couple of weeks after commit, shows that this levels out at just over 80%. This means that most secrets stay on GitHub long term. People don't catch on. Also concerning is the rate at which the repository is removed is much lower than the rate at which a commit is or a secret is removed. This means that these secrets are likely being removed by a simple commit and are still gonna be accessible in Git history. So this doesn't work. Um, some of the secrets that we are scanning for require additional secrets to be used in practice. An example is a Twitter access token. This requires the Twitter access token secret, which we were not scanning for because it didn't have a distinct enough structure. So this kind of performs like a multiple level of security, more of like a multi-factor authentication. But does this actually work to, to mitigate the impact of secret leakage? The answer is no, because when a person leaks one secret, they tend to leak all other secrets. For the search API, this happened in a worst case of 80% of the time. So if this is intended as a security measure, it simply is not effective. We've been looking at some high level stats, so let's try to narrow down on some more specific examples of leakage. We were able to find almost 2,000 personal RSA keys that we could confirm were being used for SSH. With this, the implication could be an attacker connecting to a user's server over SSH without any difficulty. We found a large number of OpenVPN configuration files set up for certificate-based authentication that did not have additional password authentication. With these files, an attacker could connect to a VPN endpoint without any additional steps. We found 54 people storing secrets in gitignore files. Simply put, this is not how gitignore files work. <laughs> I hope none of you are doing this. We were able to see a single user with 564 Google API keys these were likely stolen, that they are using to rehost re YouTube videos on their own potentially malicious site. This shows how these secrets could be used at scale if compromised. And finally, we are able to identify an AWS key for a major government agency in Western Europe. This shows the impact of secret leakage can be high reaching. And why does this happen? A common hypothesis is that that is due to developer inexperience. So we took some variables, such as developer experience, repo maturity, and repo activity, and conducted various statistical tests to see if there is any difference. But we found that there was no statistically significant differences between any of these variables and leakage. What this means is that it can happen to everyone in every type of project, regardless of experience. It could happen to you. In fact, the person who leaked the AWS key has, will claim to be a senior engineer the government AWS key, was a senior engineer with over 10 years of experience. There's, all, of course, the question of how we can mitigate this issue. Um, ultimately, the key lesson is that you can never hide a secret once it's committed to GitHub by nature of what GitHub is. So the only solution should be revocation and then to stop storing your secrets on GitHub. Um, GitHub's actually in a really unique position to mitigate this because they can scan every commit before it's publicly accessible. And after we concluded our research, GitHub announced that they were starting to do this. They have a select set of providers that if they detect a secret for, they'll send it to the provider for potential revocation. Uh, this was our recommended approach, and we're glad that they are starting to do this, but we hope they expand it to more providers in the future. Now, to wrap everything up, today I've shown you the first work that's able to detect secrets on GitHub at the scale of billions of files and do it accurately. We've demonstrated an analysis infrastructure capable of finding thousands of new secrets a day in near real time. And finally, we've shown the secret leakage is pervasive and constant, and despite being a known about problem for many years, is far from a solved problem. Um, thanks for your attention. I can take any questions. Uh, hi. Oh, yeah. uh, hi, Ben Stock from CISPA. Okay, seems to work. Um, I read in your paper that you are in the process of also notifying the repository owners, um, because I mean, this is good that GitHub is doing it now, but kind of going backwards in time, you still have those little secrets. Yeah. Um, can you give me an idea of how you kind of plan to do this or how you did this so mm -hmm. far? Yeah, so we did try to pursue that when we were writing the paper. So um, we have hundreds of thousands of repositories and each repository can have an owner and then multiple contributors. And despite this, I mean, despite the problem of the scale of this, we also have an issue where we don't have secure contact information for all of these users. Mm -hmm. So we don't really have a way to do that. 
So what we did instead was to reach out to GitHub directly and ask them if they could help us with the notification process. Their response was to point us towards their new token scanning process. Um, they actually were scanning before it was announced, so there is some overlap with our data set. And additionally, most of the secrets they are scanning for account for a large portion of our data set, so we consider this to be an acceptable form of notification as they are doing the notification themselves. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question about forks. Uh, like, is the billions to millions kind of reducing forks? Because it seems like a lot of, at least like when I was doing a scan for like Travis Keys, mm -hmm. like somebody was forking this one person's repo like yeah. 50,000 yeah. times or something. That's a good question. Um, I believe that GitHub does not include forks in the search results. Um, we actually did an analysis on the repositories, and one of the features we can get about a repository is whether it's a fork. And in the search results, it was like, I don't know the exact number, but it was minuscule. I would say like close to 0%. So most of these are like parent repositories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, thanks. Um, do you think, so you mentioned some providers, some, some secrets are actually hard for your tool to identify because they don't have any of these distinguishing marks. Yep. Do you think it would be a recommendation? Would you make the recommendation that um, you know, providers that have these secrets actually put something in them to make, you know, prepend yeah. something to them to make them more easily to identify? Because you could mm -hmm. see that going, it would be easier for GitHub to identify yeah. and tell them not to commit it, but it may also be easier for people to find it. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. I think that's a bit of an opinion question, and I'll give you my opinion. And I think that you're right, that it does make it easier to scan for, for a, um, potential attacker, but it also makes it easier to mitigate it. Um, and there is actually evidence that AWS has been scanning for their own keys on GitHub in a similar process like this in the past, and they're able to do that really well because they have that unique structure probably. So um, outside of just this being on GitHub, I mean, this is a problem on other sites too, being able to identify your services keys really well will give you a huge ability in mitigating this problem. Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Tariq from ASU. Uh, <clears throat> have you been uh, working on the latest uh, commits of each repository, or have you been looking uh, for the earlier earlier com uh, commits? Uh, yeah. Because sometimes sometimes developers uh, commit uh, do mistakes in their earlier commits, then they mm -hmm. try to uh, solve those at, at their later commits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you been? Uh, so in our um, paper, we actually are only looking at the most recent commit okay. in the repository. That is a really interesting path forward that could be taken maybe a future work is to look back in repositories, like trace back through their commit log and look for things like that. Um, but for us, we're only looking at the actual head of the repository. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm, <clears throat> I'm Klein from uh, Barland University. Have you looked at uh, or have you tried to find uh, duplicate keys in your uh, in your set of uh, extracted yeah. keys? And what do you think the meaning of uh, mm -hmm. such duplications? Yeah, we actually go into pretty good detail on this in the paper. Um, I removed it from the slides because it's a bit technical. But um, what I was reporting on numbers was unique keys. So we did also look at the total number of keys, and that there is duplication between some keys. Um, this is primarily the case for asymmetric private keys. So you'll, you'll see the same key used multiple times. That happens a lot for people cloning like the open SSI, SSL um, unit test suite where they'll have unit test keys. Mm -hmm. um, we show in our um, paper that this duplication only affects a really small number of the keys, like the top 1% accounts for pretty much all the duplication. So when we do all of our analysis, we do it against unique keys, um, and we assume that doesn't cause any problems. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. 